If you have more, that's not a good thing. Having all the wisdom is not the same as using all the wisdom. How many of y'all know, you, man, this guy is so smart, but he does the dumbest things. Man, he, you know, he can figure out this and he can figure out this, but he keeps doing this and he keeps doing that. What happened with Solomon was he almost got too big for his mental britches. And he began to go, well, you know, I don't really need God's wisdom because I, I'm Solomon. It says right there in the Bible, I'm the smartest guy that ever walked the earth. I don't need God. It's like, look, the smartest guy on the earth is still an, an ignoramus compared to the God of the universe, okay? So no matter how smart you are, God is still, he still has a few more degrees than you do behind his name. So um, there are uh, some great tidbits of wisdom. How many of y'all have at least one uh, thing rolling around in your head uh, that your dad may have taught you. Maybe it was your mom, but, but let's stick with dad. Any, anybody have any bits of wisdom that your dad taught you? Yes. Oh. Always. No. Wait. Well, yeah. It changed your life. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is actually one of my favorite sayings. Always. Anybody else? Yes, sir. You never get so busy making a living that you don't make time for a life. Very good. Okay. What are some other ones? Yes, ma'am. There you go. That's good. Uh, yes. Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Amen, brother. <laughs> Amen, brother. And his dad's a preacher, so I tell you that. Yeah, I have a friend. He said he goes, "I never will forget what my dear old dad used to say." Get out of the bathroom, let somebody else have a turn. It's like, hey, well, it's, you know. My dad gave me several bits of wisdom. I talked to my dad today. It was kind of unusual because uh, my, my dad's kind of got his days and nights mixed up. And, and so when I called my mom, I said, hey, your dad's awake. Would you like to talk to him? And so we were talking. And I, he's always good to give me bits of wisdom. One of the, one of the bits of wisdom he gave me was that there, there is no forward movement without friction. And he would, he would use that about just all these different situations. There's no forward movement without friction. So expect friction when you're moving forward. Uh, let's see, what was another one? Measure twice, cut, cut once, which I think we all know that. Um, how many of y'all grew up in someplace, Texas or Florida, where they have sand spurs? Is that what y'all call them, sand spurs? Burrs, yeah. My dad used to say, if you lick your fingers before you take it out, you won't poke yourself. And I don't know, but it worked. I know, because there are a lot of times I forgot to lick my fingers. And uh, one of my favorite things that my dad ever taught me was, and, and you might want to write this down, how do you keep from getting a splinter in your hand? My dad says, you know how to keep get, getting a splinter in your hand? No, dad, how? Don't slide your hand on wood. It's like, ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense now. But we get these bits of wisdom, and Solomon had gotten these bits of wisdom, and then he goes to his father, and, and, and he goes to his father God, and God says, what do you want? And he said, I want wisdom. I want wisdom so I can be the best king that I can be. And so he does that. So trusting the Lord, leaning not on his own understanding, submitting to him, well, how does all that work? So let's look at these first four verses before we get to verse five and six, and uh, we'll see what this says. Now, it says, my son... Do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. So don't forget. Isn't this awesome that the wisest man around knows that you're probably going to forget something? Most of us in this room have forgotten something at least once. Uh, I forget stuff all the time. But don't forget your teaching, but let your heart keep these commandments. Um, there are... There are in, in, and it's about the commandments of the Bible. Now, how many people do you know who will say, well, you know, the Bible says, and then they'll say something that's like, that is not in the Bible. Where did you come up from? I, I looked it up. There's, there's a couple. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Now, now, it's true that there's some scripture that kind of talks about discipline and all that other stuff, but actual Samuel Butler, a 17th century poet, wrote that in, in like this, uh, like a farce little novel that he wrote. So, so I mean, it wasn't... But, the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. Eh, not exactly. Money is the root of all evil. No, the love of money is the root of all evil, but the love of money, you know, okay. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Not in the Bible. 
Many of us are like, whew, that's good. God moves in mysterious ways. Now, we know God moves in mysterious ways, but people, we know the Bible says God moves in mysterious ways. It's like, I'll give you a dollar if you can show me where in the Bible it says that word for word. These statements might be true. They might be biblical, but they're not the word. And what we're supposed to do is to not forget the word, the pure word. Well, how can you not forget? Well, you stay in the word. You write the word down. For the length of days and years of life and peace will be added to you. Now, this is awesome because verse 2 says, hey, there's a promise. If you will, if you will keep the words, if you'll, if you'll follow the words, if you'll memorize the words, if you won't forget the words, you, will have, a, you have a promise. You keep my commands in your heart, you'll have a prolonged life with peace. And many of our translations even go on to say with peace and prosperity. Let me tell you, um, I know that we are, we are called to have the abundant life. Now, I know that that doesn't, that doesn't always mean that we get the million dollar mansion and, and all that other stuff. But, but here's a good example of Joseph. Joseph, the, the one who becomes the second highest in all of, all of Egypt. Well, first of all, he gets sold into slavery by his brothers because they're jealous of him. Well, what happens? He gets sold into a house where he's a slave, but he becomes the top slave. And then he gets falsely accused. He gets thrown in prison. And so he goes into prison. But what happens? He becomes the guy who's running the prison. And then he, and then he becomes the guy who's, who's basically running all of Egypt. He lived an abundant life. Even though he was sold into slavery and he was a prisoner, he still was, he was, a, he was the cream of that crop. So for the length of days, the years of life and peace, they will add to you. Verse 3. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. We live in a world where sometimes it's like, could I just set my kindness aside just long enough to just go and just really obliterate this person? I mean, look, we all know. You look, you look on Facebook, you look on all these things, and, and what, are the, what are the headlines? Watch so-and-so plaster. Watch so-and-so demolish. Watch so-and-so destroy. That the, none of those are kind things, right? So, so we're supposed to not let kindness and truth leave us. Um, and uh, I don't know how many of y'all have ever seen these. Now, some people love tattoos. And if you guys are tattoo people, that's fine. If you like, if, there's this thing called armed with truth. And if you ever want to, uh, like, do something that will help you memorize scripture, these are little temporary tattoos that you can put on your arm or whatever. And so, you know what? You carry your arm with you most places that you go, I've found. And sometimes I'll actually, there's something I'm supposed to remember to pray for. I will write it on, on my arm because, again, I tend to look at my arm and I'll go, oh, I've got, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to pray for that. And so, like, I've got right there, I am a child of God. Now, it comes off, like, probably tomorrow. You can memorize scripture that way. So it's not just, it's not just literally, but, but, but figuratively, we want to write them, we want to bind them around our neck, write them on a tablet of our heart. Um, do things that will help you remember and carry on the word of God. Then verse four says this. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and men. Now, we know that when you hear that scripture, does it make anybody else think about when Jesus was in the temple and he stayed behind and he was talking to the priests and, and the teachers and his mom and dad got, uh, you know, a day's travel away and they begin to look for Jesus and he wasn't in the group. And so they go back and they say, Jesus, what are you doing? And, and he goes, well, I'm, I'm doing my, my father's business. I, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry that caught you off guard, but I'm doing what I was designed to do. But it says in Luke uh, chapter 2, 51 and 52, um, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth. So, you know, he wasn't going to leave them and, and just stay there in the temple. He continued in subjection to them, and his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And don't you know, Mary had a huge heart because of the things she had treasured in there from, from the conception to, to his crucifixion, to his resurrection, and on forth, so on forth. But this verse 52, Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Compare that to verse 4. 
Um, so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. That's what happens when we put the word of God in our heart and we memorize it and we begin to live it. We will build, we will build our reputation with both God and with man. Verse five and six then goes on to say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Now, most of us have heard, have heard that, uh, that expression about um, the peace that passes understanding. And I'm, I'm borrowing this and changing it a little bit like, like this. But... Um, to have the peace that passes understanding, you have to stop demanding the understanding. If you demand to understand, you don't need, you're, not, you're never going to get the peace that passes understanding. You have to be willing to go, you know what, I'm not going to understand this. I'm just going to have to be at peace. With it. Father, would you help me be at peace with it and help me understand it? He says, no, 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 no. Go, go back. Okay. Lord, I just want to be at peace with this. But it really would help me if I understood it. No, no, no. Look, first of all, someone who does not have the Holy Spirit living inside them, there are things they will never understand. They just won't. They're spiritually dead. You can't make a dead person understand something. Why? Because they're dead. But once we're spiritually alive and there are things that we'll understand that somebody else will not understand. But let's be honest, there are things that even if I could tell you why it happened, you still wouldn't understand it. I think of the story of Job. Now, the story of Job, I know. What's the good news about Job? Job was a godly man. He stood by the Lord. Everything that was taken from him was returned and then some. I still have a problem with this. <laughs> Job still had a bunch of funerals that he went to of his own children. I don't think he just got over that because he got more children. If, if something happens to my Joseph, then I don't worry, we'll just get you another Joseph. I don't want another Joseph. I like the one that I have. But see, even if somebody goes, well, okay, Mike, understand. We, you lost this because this is going to happen, and this person was going to see, that person is going to see, that person, and that person is going to, and so, so you can see in, in, my, in my economy, I was just moving some pieces on the boards to bring somebody else in, and I'm going to go, I don't understand that. Why did I have to lose something that was very valuable to me? I think the peace that passes understanding is essential for Christians to have. Why? Because there's just some stuff we're never going to understand. How many of y'all want understanding more than you want peace? Some of y'all, you're raising your hand inside. What we want is we want to have peace more than we have understanding. And this is coming from a God who tells us that he wants us to have wisdom. So that's pretty important. So um, we need peace that passes understanding. And uh, what's that got to do with this story? Well, what has to do with this, under story, this story is it says... Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. Now, I know all of us, well, I'm going to say most of us know, we're aware when we go from, God, I'm, God I'm, I need you, God, I'm trusting you, God, I'm following you, God, what do you want me to do to, you know, God, I think I got this one figured out, I'll be back. Anybody else like me? I know those times where I go, God, I got this figured out. I'm, I'm really going to just deal with this on my own because I have faced this. Th I, I'm one of the word, world's worst people about, I will, there's an there's a app I have on my phone. It's my banking app. <laughs> go through, did it not go through? That's me leaning on my own. I'm not saying, well, so you're saying you should never... We're supposed to be wise in, in business dealings. We're supposed to be wise in our finances. We're supposed to be wise in our health. I understand that. But it gets to the point where it's like, okay, God, I don't really trust you, so I'm going to figure this out. That's a mistake. But Mike, I'm really good at figuring stuff out. You should give God a chance. You'll find out he's better than you are at figuring stuff out. 
So if, we're, if we can say, I want to have peace more than 